Hello and welcome to Marketing Tech. My name is David Ogletree and today we have my new guest, Steve Wilderman. Is that how you pronounce it? Wiedemann. Wiedemann. Okay. I always add an L in there for some reason. Everyone does. It's okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for show, for coming up today and, and talking to me about your technology. And so um, I just blinked out on where you work. Now, where do you work again? Uh, so I've run a small consultancy here in the Los Angeles area in okay. La Mirada. That's right. So uh, okay. it's Wiedemann so, Consulting Group, just my that's name. That's right. Okay, Wiedemann Consulting. And then yep. also you two, uh, you said you do some teaching as well. At, at, right. Uh, I'm teaching six classes right now, if you can believe that. I've got one at UC San Diego on tools and analytics. I have one at Cal State Fullerton on search strategy. And I have four that I'm teaching at the community college here at Fullerton. Uh, they're all online extensions. Some are certificate programs. Uh, but those four classes are web design, SEO, SEM, and online advertising. And today I got through the fourth of four office hours on the first week of the second term that I'm doing at Fullerton College. So yeah, I, I keep busy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit later, I was going to ask you a little bit about um, some of the technology you use in doing sure. that as well. Okay. So in your, your daily work every day, you know, you said you studied up a little bit. What kind of computer are you using on for your daily work? Right now, I'm using a Alienware, Alien 51. And it's, it's because I got to the point in um, and trying to do video rendering and, and um, render Camtasia videos while on a go to meeting or a, a zoom with someone and um, my computer was just burning up and you could just hear it running like it was about to just like explode. So I said I need to I need to be able to have 170 tabs open in Chrome be processing a video and be having a, a virtual conversation like we're having um, right. and still be productive. Yeah, otherwise, you know, I, I feel like I can only do one task at a time and that would drive me crazy. Is that a laptop or a desktop? It's a laptop. Uh, just, it was a, yeah, it's a laptop PC disguised as a laptop. It's this monstrous beast of a, of yeah. a computer that you probably don't want to take on a travel adventure anywhere. I saw a review for a $10,000 laptop the other day. It had a 2080 Ti video card in it. It was a crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> crazy. I think it even had like a i9, some ridiculous um, uh, processor. Processor, in it or something. yeah. Yeah. What is the processor and RAM you have in that? On this guy, and I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit because I have my oh, little okay. cheat on my thing. Um, da, 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 da. So, processor, where is this one? Oh, so much juice in this thing. And I, I had him tweak it a little bit, so it took a little bit longer to get. I have a, you ready for this? Ninth generation Intel Core TM. Oh, oh, TM's trademark, stupid. Ninth generation Intel Core i9-9900, uh, um, and then in parentheses, it's eight core, 16 megabyte cache E up to five gigahertz with turbo boost. Wow, that is, that's one of their top of the line. Uh, that is def definitely is a, what they call a desktop replacement. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a desktop disguised as a laptop. And you know, there's, there's actually two power cables uh, that yes. power this thing and yeah you, i've actually seen a review of that recently yeah it does have two power cables yeah um, it's crazy because <laughs> you probably have a pretty big video card in there too right i'm sure it, the monitor i purchased with it was the, the 34 inch alienware uh, curved monitor so yeah. i wanted to make sure i had you know the, the best of you know what i could have for yeah you can um, see my my um, video editing and gaming machine behind me it's a uh -huh. it's the it's the amd side of thing i have the the latest nice. greatest amd the the AMD Ryzen 9 uh, 36, 3900 XT or something like that. Oh my God, and that's amazing. Like the, do you actually use it for gaming or do you just use it oh to yeah. have high performance? Okay. Oh yeah, I use it for gaming as well. I play uh, Doom I, Eternal and- I have Stadia, and but I haven't really played around with it too much, especially not on this new machine yet, but I haven't really played video games other than maybe the Galaga machine I got in the other room um, in forever. You're so lucky, yeah. I'm, I'm, I wish I could just take a break now and then and go play some video games. But yeah. for me, if I, I get a break, to... people know and they say, Steve, you got a sec? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to play a lot of video games back in the day, but I, um, and even now I still, even though I do play them, I, I rarely play for more than an hour a day or something. I'm just, you know, just sit down for a minute and play something, but I still do love playing them. And, and uh, I just had a lot of fun building that machine. Actually, I started off building a more of a mid-sized gaming machine and then I got excited and built, ended up building two machines. <laughs> nice. That's gotta be so fun. And do you put like the VR equipment on and everything and, and run around killing zombies or? <laughs> you know, I want to, that's, that's coming up. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna be able to do that. 
uh, I've been watching things fine. about that. I, I kept thinking about using one of these rooms and getting one of those new Microsoft uh, VR rooms where you get the cameras around the whole thing. And oh, wow. That would have been a lot of fun, but we hired some new people and I needed the desk, so no, no VR room for us. By the way, the graphics card on this, on this beast is uh, uh, NVIDIA G, GE Force uh, RTX 2078 gigabyte GDDR6 OC ready. And I don't nice. know enough about hardware to know if that's really good, but I'm assuming it's pretty it's, good. It's pretty good. Uh, 2080, 70 is probably kind of the mid-level high end, I guess you would call it. Um, the 2080 Ti is the best, well, not is one of the best, and there's a couple oh. above that that are crazy. Um, but uh, 2070 is probably the one of the better ones, you know, for a laptop because you do, they we, do make, we like I said, Ready Player uh, One, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's considered a almost high end or you know the bottom of the high end kind of thing, but it's still high end. It's very nice. Uh, so uh, I have I just got a new laptop and I have an older one which is the 1650 Ti, um, which is pretty close to the 2060 Ti, nice. and yours is a 20. Yeah, I mean a 2060 normal and then you have the 2070 and then they also add super to the end of them so there's the 2070 super and then 2080 2080 super and then the 2080 ti just i've That's been neat. into video cards recently and it's really hard to keep track of it i mean there's so many incremental changes you know like ten dollars more for this and ten dollars more for that and it goes all you know all the way up from two hundred dollars to four thousand dollars you know it's, <laughs> it's just keep building it and, and people who like cars do the same thing i have friends that always posting pictures of some new like muffler that just came in and you know and it's it's funny when you when you really enjoy something you know it it's um it stops becoming a necessity and it, it becomes you know more like a a hobby like well yeah i'm using it for work but really i just really enjoy having lightning fast speeds and and when it, when i got this monitor i put on the the tomorrowland event because I, I i love listening to electronic music while i'm working and it was so distracting because it was amazing, you know, watching the, the graphics card on a 3D monitor, um, you know, at, at this virtual event. It was just like, like, man, I'm not going to get any work done with this, you know, entertainment ready, you know, machine. So, uh, you know, so I had to, had to like get my calendar set up to make sure that I'm not, not goofing around too long, you know. Yeah, my new laptop, it's 4K and it's really nice. It's, uh, right it's pretty amazing. It's a 15 inch 4K. And it has a um, kind of last generation kind of, you know, uh, video card in it, but it's still pretty great. It'll still run Doom and stuff, but not at the highest settings. Um, um, and behind me, the, where I have my logo back there, that's a, uh, one of the newest um, monitors out right now. It's called the Odyssey, the Samsung Odyssey and G7. And what it is, is it's really curved. It actually almost looks like a smile when you hold it sideways. It's, a, it's one of the most curved monitors you can get right now. They only make two of them right now um, and I really want to get the big one they have a 49 inch one which is basically the same thing but double the size width and um, and it curves really like all around it's like fully immersive your family and friends will never see you again if you get that one yeah. it's plugged in all the but, time but unfortunately only one company makes it and Samsung and they have it hasn't uh, they released it and then recalled it and they you can't get them right now so um, hopefully they'll be back out soon because they're amazing yeah, there's, there's a lot of that right now. Some of the things that, you know, I buy from B&H as I'm starting to set up a, a studio here at the office. And there's a lot of things that are just back ordered and, and backlogged. And, you know, it's uh, it's just a crazy time. So we, you know, we, we work with what we have and, and we just try to make the best of it. The phrases that, that become the buzzwords are things like, you know, humanizing the experience. And, you know, um, it's... Uh, it's it's interesting, but I think at the same time, I think it's woken um, it's woken up some of those older businesses that that were so set in their ways on how to do things, and now they're like, wow, I'm actually getting more productivity from my team members. I have a shorter drive when I come to the office because I don't have to sit in as much traffic. You know, maybe maybe this is the you know the the tipping point for what the you know the country needed to um, to have more work from home. You know, to have yeah. more virtual because, you know, I've, I've been loving it. My, my team loves it. They're, they're all productive and um, kicking more butt than, than ever. And we still talk all day long on Slack. We all share what we're planning on doing in the morning about what, what our day looks like ahead of us. And we engage. It's, it's been fantastic. So I hope, um, I hope it, 
it it sustains at least a, a good part of you know what what we've been able to accomplish through you know some really challenging times. Yeah, I have some friends, uh, probably mutual friends, where they have said that you know they're they're going to get rid of their office and you know they they're not going to you know. Jim Boykin own... did right. Internet marketing just. It did he? I, I wasn't sure about him. I think it might have been Christopher Simfer, maybe, or somebody like okay. that, um, or or maybe Arson. I can't remember who it was, but it was somebody, <laughs> one of those guys, and uh, or maybe all of them. I don't know. They're they're going to be doing that. They're going to be closing up the office and just staying this way. And uh, you know, I saw an article recently where they were talking about how a lot of companies were had this in the in the pipe and were planning on doing it eventually, but it was really hard to pull the trigger. Um, mm -hmm. And then this forced their hand, and they had to do it. And then all of a sudden, they're like. Yep, it worked just like we thought it would, and we're going to keep it. You know, so it 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 is going to be very permanent for quite a few companies. Um, Sounds that way, and yeah. and that's a that's a good thing in many ways. It's a good thing because people are going to be closer to their families. They're going to be able to to work out at the gym. They got some of them got two hours of their day back that they spent driving. You know, they have they have no excuse to not use that time to get healthier, to get up earlier, to to sit at the table like our, our parents and grandparents did and read the newspaper. You know, I subscribe to the Sunday paper as a starting point just so that I can kind of get that experience of just sitting down and reading a paper because, you know, we, we're, so, we're so all over the place as digital marketers that we just get to the office as quick as we can. And, you know, we're, we're built to, to constantly be improving efficiency and, and reducing the time we spend on things that aren't actually making us money. So, um, yeah, I think, I think this change is is healthy in many ways. And I think the pandemic taught the, the world that, you know, not only can you survive, but you've been doing it wrong for quite a while. So. Um, Do you remember a time when they, there used to be two new newspapers delivered a day? Are you new to remember that? Hmm. I, I, I delivered the paper for the Orange County Register when I was a kid. Back yeah, in when the I, in the seventies, I remember my grandparents uh, in Houston, because it's a big city, there would be a morning paper and an afternoon paper. Oh, or evening cool. paper and uh, it was it was the same company the same paper the houston chronicle and they would deliver twice a day because they're you know other than that there was the news you know, 30 minutes of news at six and that was it you know right yeah, and like now where we can just get news constantly 24 7. yeah i do like to use the news job that i had the paper boy job that i had as as one of my my favorite stories for um, for folks that are, are struggling to learn something new, right? Are those, those people that are getting into SEO and they're learning how to be these introverted extroverts and be analytical and, and think about user you know, buying behavior and be charismatic enough to try to earn links and do outreach. And so you know, a lot of times they come, come to me and they're just like, you know, I'm, I, feel like, I feel like I'm the weakest link that I can't do this. It's just way too much and it's really overwhelming. And so I go back to the days when I was the newspaper at 5 30 in the morning i'd get up every morning you know and i'd walk out to the curb and there's a big stack of unbundled papers <laughs> i'd have to drag it back over to you know where my my house was and um and bundle the papers up and i did that every day but i'm right-handed so i'd go out to the curb and i'd i'd pick it up with my right hand carry it over to the the house and i did that every day for over a year and uh, you know one day in, in pe at, at school everybody was sort of teasing me because uh, i was doing pull-ups you know, with one arm and they're like your right arm is this, this massive thing and your left arm looks like just a normal 13 year old's arm what's the deal and um, it's because if you do something repetitiously you know you you build the muscle you you grow you build so um and it, it goes along along with the, my favorite quote from the 13th warrior you know where the guy hands him a sword he's like i need a sword and he hands him this big sword and he's like i can't carry it it's too heavy and he says grow stronger right and it's just uh it's this funny paradigm of of you can you can do anything if you just keep trying if you just keep working at it and so many people just get overwhelmed and they quit and um i think that's what makes you know uh, folks like you and i who, who have made it through 20 years of, of being in an industry um because we never gave up we didn't quit when when rankings went down we got excited we were like how do we get rankings back up what do we you know let's let's figure out who's ranking now and what's making them rank and you know, and as we as we finally figure out all the, the things we need to change, the algorithms readjusted and everything was fine again. But yeah. uh, you know, that's that's what I that's what I really love about you know what we do in, in our industry is we you know we're constantly being competitive against ourselves and then helping each other, teaching each other, even though we're we're all um, you know in the, in the same world with similar clients, sometimes even competing areas. You know, because there's 
you know, there's, there's just that, that camaraderie, I think that we have that, you know, no other industry that I know of, um, you know, you'll, you won't find that anywhere. Right. Anyway, that's a tangent, but that's, that's, no, that's fine. I, I find it funny when I talk to you know, younger people in the industry and they're like, Oh, this new update is killing me. I was like, I'll experience something like the Florida update in 2003 and come back to me. You know, oh, that right. was, you know, <laughs> yeah. whenever, when there's truly a paradigm shift, <laughs> everything is completely different. Yeah. Um, I, rem- I remember, I remember all the, the webmasters that were linking to George Bush's biography page and doing the Google <laughs> bombing. And I remember yeah. all that. I, I wrote, yeah. I wrote eBooks back in like 2005, 2006. And I look at them now and I'm like, Oh my God, I got to make sure anyone who downloaded this throws it away. And it's like, why would I write this? Because we didn't know any better. It was a wild, wild west. You know, we were just. Yeah. yeah I know there's some stuff I used to talk about and write about and even spoke yeah. at PubCon about in 2010 or something. I'm kind of embarrassed yeah. about now, you know, just like, I mean, it worked then, you know, <laughs> but that's, that's how we do. We, we, we do what works. We do what we learn works and, we look back and, and, you know, we grow, we evolve, we adapt and, um, you know, we enjoy the journey. So you were talking about your laptop. So you said that, um, you know, use it for rendering, um, use it for lots of tabs. Um, what, how many tabs do you normally have open? Somewhere between 50 to 170 or so. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you need a lot of memory for that. And use Chrome, I take it. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Chrome. So yeah, yeah I, I've got, and the things that I have open are things that I uh, intend to close. So I, over the course of the week, you know, I'll, I'll go down to lower tabs and over the weekend, I'll open some new things up that I need to work on. Um, I'm writing a, a, a textbook right now for students. Uh, as I mentioned, the colleges. So I'll have like, like four or five Canvas tabs open and ready to go. I'll have uh, probably 10 different smart sheets for some of the different internal projects and client projects that I'm, I'm uh, observing and, and making sure everyone's staying on their tasks for. Um, I got a few articles that I want to read that I probably should just put my Evernote, but I'm like, no, it's a short one. I'll, I'll get to it. And I just don't. <laughs> um, do and then, you, of course, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, what do you use for your bit of video editing? Um, so I, I just recently got the Adobe suite. So okay. um, we have, we have a I company use. we've been outsourcing to for, um, for some of the, the blogs that we tried putting together and did a horrible job. We had great people and, and great ideas, but the audio and the video just wasn't there because we don't know any of that kind of stuff. We're, you know, we're digital marketers. So um, sure. as, as the journey continues, we're getting better equipment. We're getting better studio set up. Here's kind of a preview of studio in progress. You can kind of see where oh, we're nice. going. Um, green screens, the whole thing, right? Oh, wow. Um, so, so yeah, the, um, the video software, the reason I, I got it for myself was so if I need to do something sort of ad hoc for the school for, for teaching. Um, I can have some fun with it as opposed to just, you know, you know, recording a video and uploading it. Now I can do some things with green screen. I can also, um, you know, do some video editing and add some features and comedy to it. So it's not just me lecturing, you know, to right. students for 30 minutes. It's something fun and engaging. Yeah. I've gotten a lot better at premiere doing this. Uh, uh-huh. I still, I still don't really Use so bad it is that I forgot the name of it. <laughs> I forgot Adobe it was Premiere, yes. And, <laughs> but I'm sure uh, I can figure it out. I was using Wondershare a bit on my old machine. And so I, I got to do a little bit of, of sort of bare bones, basic stuff. One thing I really like about Adobe Premiere is that it works with the other products. So like if um, I have audio, like when I get done here, I'll import the, um, the audio, the Zoom records separate audio tracks. So I import both of those. And then if I want to make a change to one of them, I just right click on it and I open it in Audition. So I can go into Adobe Audition, the, the, the audio suite, and I can go in there and make changes to it. And just hit save and close it. And it just automatically puts it back in there. So I don't have to export and import and all that That's kind of amazing. stuff. And then also you can do the same thing with uh, Photoshop. You can open up the picture in Photoshop, make a change to it and just save it and it'll come back in there. Yep. Remember so, when, when it was Photoshop and image ready and we had to toggle between the two back yeah. in the day? Yeah. So and then, you mentioned then Camtasia. Is that what you use for uh, screen capture? Quite a bit. Yeah, I use Camtasia for a lot of things. Sometimes I'll, I'll jump into Snagit if it's a, a short thing that I'm doing, but most of the time it's Camtasia. Have you ever heard of Adobe Captivate? No. I've used that a little bit. It's used for making um, online classes and stuff. It, it's pretty okay. uh, robust. It's a separate product. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with the, the $50 Wait. a month we already pay, but um, it's a separate product altogether. And it's pretty amazing. It allows you to um, create some pretty elaborate courses. Um, I used to make some, try to make some courses for pay-per-click back uh, five years ago when I first started out. 
um, but it was just so much. Oh my huh? God, thank you for showing me this. I can't wait to check it out. <laughs> Do I want to know how much it costs? Probably not, right? Uh, I think it's. Oh, it's not bad. Costly. There's a there's a teacher edition that's like three ninety nine. Oh, nice. So yeah, cool. it's uh, it's pretty amazing. It does a lot of cool stuff. Um, but uh, I used that a long time ago. I haven't used it in a while. It's probably changed quite a bit. Um, and they have special salespeople for Captivate and they'll start, once you get it downloaded and give me your email, they start calling you and say, hey, you oh, gotta great. pay for this. Yeah, upsell, <laughs> upsell, upsell, you know. Always be selling, apparently. So you make, um, so you also make evergreen content uh, type of uh, online content? Not as much as I'd like to. Of course. Uh, cobbler story, right? Taking care of your clients first. Sure. Um, but, um, but yeah, the plan is, you know, this year is to transition away from uh, a lot of the, the more fulfillment type work that, you know, we've, we've done to help fund some of our courses that we're doing. So we've, you know, we've worked with certain industries so much um, that we were able to sort of create an out of the box, you know, roadmap. So instead of you having to go to an SEO agency and paying 10 to $20,000 for a strategy, uh, we've created some out of the box. So if you're an attorney, you know, this guide walks you through the technical, contextual, and and off-page visibility and local SEO that you would need, um, kind of step by step. So it's it's a guide, but it's an industry guide it's specific to um, like five different industries that we're approaching. So my hope is by probably by the end of, of Q1 of next year, um, you know, we'll be able to start selling those and improving those as a as kind of our day to day, and doing some R and D and playing around with some really neat. Um, uh, you know, newer technologies like voice search and Google Action Console, Alexa, you know, skills, oh, wow. as opposed to, you know, the, the day to day of normal SEO stuff of, all right, well, let's, let's change some titles and descriptions. Let's, let's uh, look at our core vitals. That's, you know, it, it gets old after a while and you don't, you don't really get to stay cutting edge. You don't get to explore. You don't get to, um, you know, break the boundaries of, of new ways to, um, you know, just try to drive traffic. So I'm excited that we're, we're doing that transition and I will be hopefully creating more of that um, on demand and some canned content so that we can, you know, be a little bit more structured in, you know, our overall marketing strategy. Yeah, it sounds like you're very similar to me in the sense that uh, you provide um, free or cheap training to get, you know, new clients. I've, I've done that for years. I learned, like I said, told you before, I learned that from my father, you know, you, you t teach people how to, you know, you don't, I don't, I've never, I've never say, Oh, I've got this big secret. I'm going to you know, tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm selling some big secret, but um, I tell people anything they want to hear because a lot of times they look at it and they're like, I don't want to do that. I and mean, they pay and then they pay me a monthly fee to do it. Right. And that's really, you know, sometimes that happens uh, by default when you deliver like an SEO strategy and you say, here's, here's all the technical things you need to do by priority and effort level. And, examples right. and everything you can do to try to give enough context that they could do it themselves. But even then they go through this, you know, on the technical side, they'll go through 72 items and be like, you know, we could probably do it, but I don't know that my team is going to do it the way you want it done or the way that you think it should be done. So they bring you in on retainer to, to support them. And that's, that's the normal cadence of, you know, us and how we work with clients is we build a strategy. And most of the time they, they invite us to, you know, continue on to help them, you know, through that whole process. It's a great strategy. It's always worked for me. And I, yeah. I, I, our, our little I niche it. group, I think it works for, for all of us. Hey, right? <laughs> some of us are still struggling and I've tried to help. I've helped, um, I've helped two people so far that uh, were on, on social media and they said, look, I'm, I've lost half my clients. I don't know how I'm going to pay, pay my rent. And, and so I, I just said, Hey, you know, I could use a second set of eyes and some of the things I'm working on if you want to come in. And so, um, so I was able to, to do that a little bit, but, um, you know, it's, it's tough out there right now. Um, I, I hope, I hope it improves for everyone. You think with digital marketing that that'd be like a high demand. Everyone's going online. So, mm -hmm. you know, they need to be found online. So I don't know. Yeah, I of, lost a, a, a big client back in October, but I, you know, um, I've been able to make back some new ones and, and stuff. So it's I been, I tried to throw you some stuff now and then when it, when it came yeah, in. Yeah, that's right. We talked about something. I don't think it ever worked out, but yeah, it's, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, one of the things I do, and it's it's kind of funny. I've I, you know I started off in SEO back in two thousand three and did that for quite a while, and kind of got burnt out on it and switched over. It was kind of retired for a little bit and came back and did uh, pay per click, mm -hmm. and uh, decided I wanted to you know get into the pay per click side of things. And what I've done is I've you know I've gone back on my SEO roots and 
you know, uh, you know, I mean, I do this because I like my SEO friends, but I also, my SEO friends will tell me, you know, they'll send me business because they're like, well, I don't do pay-per-click. <laughs> and I yeah, we, we know David a few does. of those folks and they won't even touch it. And I, I love, I love the fact that, that PPC is, is predictable, right? Once you, yeah. once you get it set up and, and you've got your, you know, your automated bidding and everything squared away, your, your focus then is just, just fine tuning your quality scores, fine tuning your ad relevancy scores, fine tuning your landing page scores and taking your SEO background to optimize the landing pages so that you do get those landing page relevancy scores. Um, but it's, it's yeah. interesting watching how it's evolved. You know, I used to, I used to teach, you know, PPC at some of the local colleges here. And um, just as a, as a guest speaker, I'd come in and kind of go how, show them how it works. Like here's ad rank and ad rank is really you know, a combination of, of, you know, your, what you're willing to spend and your click through rate and, you know, and now it's, it's like, well, now it's like 14 different factors. Are you using, you know, ad formats and all the right extensions? And are you, you know, it's just like, it's so, it's gotten so complicated. So much to the point where I feel like Google's really trying to push us away from keyword bidding and really yep. trying to get us more into audiences. Like maybe someday keywords might even go away and it's going to be just focused specifically on audiences and market audiences and affinity audiences. And, um, you know, I, I, feel like that's sort of the, the, the trend and the pattern of, of where, um, you know, paid search is going, forget about the keyword, let's figure out what the person wants and be there, you know, when they do search for it. Yeah, yeah. it certainly does feel like that. You know, I, mm -hmm. uh, I have, like you said, there's so many things going on. I have, you know, I have, I still do uh, AdWords training and I have students and, you know, we're, t you know, I sell, you know, I sell eight hour packages. And so they, you know, they want to sign up for two or three or four hours at a time. But then after an hour, they're like, I got to go. <laughs> My brain hurts. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you, it's, it's, you know, six I, minutes, by the way, to the college, yeah. when you, when you're uploading videos, they recommend six minutes, anything after six minutes, you lose their attention. Yeah. Mine are like yeah, 30 they, minutes. So I'm like, I really need to work on slimming mine down. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's uh, several companies that do the AdWords training in different major cities and uh, they do eight hours where you can, I know people have taken those. We have to go and sit down for eight hours straight. You know, I've done a few break. of those. Yep. And, uh, you know, so those are nuts. I don't know how people get anything out of that. It's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. But yeah so okay. people well, hey, they, get, they get their certificate. That's why they came. You know, most of the yeah. people do, do the routine to get the, the credentials, but yeah. still, go into an industry without any any experience and end up bouncing around between different companies and maybe maybe that's part of the problem is that some of the folks that are doing the training need to break it into smaller bite-sized chunks like you do in two hours and you know um I, I got that from the last course i put online it was this monstrous all all uh, encompassing seo course for like 600 bucks and i got a lot of good feedback on it but very few people got all the way through it so, you know, now we're, now we're breaking it down into more bite-sized pieces, you know, take a, you know, a two hour training, have an hour break in between. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's like, like what you're doing. That's the direction. I think that makes the most yeah. sense for people who are trying to learn something. You know? Yeah. Normally I try to do two hours, but my, my most recent, uh, student, he, he wants a one hour chunks, but when we get yeah. to about an hour. I'm really getting going. I want to keep talking. And he's like, I gotta go. And I'm like, <laughs> Because I, you know, I could go. That on happens with clients time. too. Yeah, clients huh? bring in uh, clients will bring in other team members, and you know, like, oh, I got a hard stop, gotta go. You know, it's like, <laughs> I know this stuff isn't very exciting. But then, if you start the call, we start our our consulting calls with analytics. If you start the call with analytics, and you're looking at dollars, and you're looking at revenue, and you are recognizing the people who are on the call who played a role in it, like, hey, it's thanks to you that that we were able to get this page up and ranking, and now it's generated, you know, over you know, $70,000. And thanks to you working with the teams to get buy-in to make that happen, even though in the back of your mind, you know, you were the one that provoked it and built the business case and convinced them to do it. You give them credit. And, um, and now, now everyone's bought in. How can we make more money? Right. Oh, cool. It's like, it's like playing casino game for them. Once you get them bought in, you're looking at the analytics with you and, and they're getting credit for it. You've racked in $150,000 in new revenue that you can brag about. That's probably your your annual salary. You know, you just paid for yourself. Let's double that. Let's do another page. You know, and and now they're more interested in listening to the tech um, recommendations and the content recommendations and some of the things that you suggested to get more links to the website. But sometimes that's what you got to do. But yeah, that's I know exactly what you mean. So if you're like, oh my god, my head's spinning, all this technical crap, right? 
<laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, it's not just that it also, they, you know, I've given them something new and that's all they can think about is this new technique they've learned. You know, they want to do an ad customizer or they want to do, um, you know, something, some new kind of thing. And it's just, I got a client own, like that. I got to do this like, thing. And I'm like, no, you shouldn't do that. Right. <laughs> so funny. I got an email today from a, from a friend of mine who's, who's a DJ and he talked about geeky, geeking out on equipment. This guy's got this massive DJ stand with all the bells and whistles on it. And like makes the DJs from the eighties, you know, look like, like five-year-olds playing with Tonka toys. Yeah. And, um, and he also runs a, like a water restoration business and contracting business. And he goes, what do you think of these guys? And it was like something, some agency that had a seven on it. I can't remember the name of it, but what do you think of these guys? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know anything about them. But then he sends me a video of them walking through what they do check out what we did for this construction client. And then you, you pull up that same construction client and the same tool that they were showing off in, in like Ahrefs or whatever. And, and you go back to the client and like, are you sure you want these kind of links? You know, and then what I did is I actually embedded in the, uh, in the Ahrefs and the anchors section. I put, put the Google link schemes document, highlighting the explicit anchor text and putting a big arrow and a big you know, frowny face. Are you sure you want to spend this much money cleaning up the mess they're going to make? Um, instead of just creating better content and building better relationships. It's like, yeah, well, I guess I'm glad I didn't hire them then. It's like, that's a, why, it's a hard why, battle. Why are you still getting yeah. away with this crap? You know, how is Google yeah. not picking up on this BS? You know? Yeah, it's really hard when people come to you and say that my competitor's doing this and they're killing ah. me. You know, I'm like, yeah, but they're going to they're gonna fall down because I had a client where they had, without, you know, without my permission, you know, without asking me, they went off and did something that their, their competitor was doing and it just, and it literally killed the domain. No, I mean, the domain was so, it was unrecoverable because the, the, the technique, um, it was such an amazing technique because what it did is it, it brought links, most, the worst kind of links, but tons and tons of link, new ones every day, tons and tons. And it was just, and, and you couldn't stop it. It was out of control. I mean, there was literally no way to stop it. I don't want to know. Don't even tell me the software. I don't want to know anything about it. <laughs> oh my so God. We, so we just had to burn that domain and switch to another one. But it, yeah, we call that a 410 situation. <laughs> <laughs> you take the content, you move it to a new domain and you 410 the crap out of the old one. Yep. Yeah, don't well, redirect nothing you start over the content was good it was ranking before it'll rank again but don't 301 any of that penalty yeah, <laughs> yeah so we're almost done i was just gonna ask you real quick you kind of mentioned yeah. side mentioned it a while ago you, did you say you have a galaga machine i do i have a a, a galaga game in um I have three offices here and one of the offices we've got galaga we've got a, a classic atari i've got um nintendo classic so the only thing i is get it, time to play is the is the galaga mm -hmm console is it the yeah. is it the upright one from like the 80s the coin operator uh, it's it's the one up version it's still fun it's um okay just like the regular one but it's a little bit smaller oh okay i see what you're saying and it has uh, a was, uh galaxian on it too which is kind of oh fun. wow yeah. when i was in high school my father got me a um, star wars the original the one with the green and black oh, yeah um, it was one of the upright ones and so we had it in our house know. you know it, you know you could put coins in it we, we had it set you didn't have to put coins in it but uh that's amazing so my friends remember asteroids would, we used to play yep. asteroids and pong there's a, new, there's a show on netflix i don't know if you've seen it called high score where they cover all that stuff it's, uh, it's really multi, it's maybe five episodes and they talk about each uh, genre they start off start off with atari of course and then do nintendo what's it called again i'm gonna look it up high score it's one of the newer shows on netflix it just came out last month netflix um, it's called High Score. And it's really well made, and it covers the history cool. of consoles and video games as well. Uh, so it kind of covers the amazing you know, where it started off with Zork type of games on the PC and stuff, and they uh -huh. and they they kind of tell the story of ID Software a little bit with uh, Wolfenstein and Doom. It's really good. Do they do they go back to like like the Apple IIe when we used to play Oregon Trail and Odell Lake and do that? Or? Um, they cover the Apple II a little bit, but not real, not real much. They mostly cover PC, um, but it's mostly about consoles. And they cover um, a couple different um, tournaments. There was a Nintendo one, I think, an Atari one, where somebody okay. had won a big a tourn worldwide tournament or whatever, uh, mm. playing different games. I have I have a friend from Canada who was um, who was part of the That's Incredible episode where they did the the whole um, uh, arcade battle and um guys guys incredible his name's chris and back then it was uh, he changed his name it was darren olson back in the day and that's incredible and they did a documentary about it called chasing ghosts and yeah. um you know he's interviewed some other folks about what that era was like when you know we used to 
ride our bikes to the arcade and and play for 24 hours and you know i miss yep. those days man. those are amazing yeah, grab, you grab a slurpee on the way over there and you set your console up got your, your pocket of quarters and you're going yeah you know? yeah i remember those days yeah those were so much fun i remember doing a lot of that so i guess we kind of run out of time thank you so much for coming um it's steve Witterman at uh Wiederman and consulting Wiederman. Is that like we demand we demand consulting is that correct Wiedemann. yes I and, think uh, huh i think it's norwegian i don't know much about my heritage but i'm told it's norwegian and i'm david ogletree from wme training and this is marketing tech thank you so much for watching and please subscribe bye-bye